Hey guys, I know I haven't done a Dark Side of the Ring review in a while. I've uh, been busy, believe it or not. Um, you know, just going through a lot of things, you know, preparing for a trip and everything. So just going through a lot, you know, not too much, but, you know, just enough uh, to where I basically, uh, you know, <laughs> essentially don't have time to, to do what I'm going to do and everything because, you know, I'm either tired and, you know, I just want to finish finish doing some other stuff and things like that. Uh, but anyway, I'm just going to go over this real quickly. Uh, first of all, the Brutus Beefcake one they did uh, two weeks ago I thought was good. Uh, or three weeks ago, this Tuesday, it'll be three weeks ago, I thought was good. Uh, wasn't too dark until they got to the part where he basically almost lost his face and in a sense almost lost his life. Uh, the only dark part out, outside of that one as well is uh, when he was, you know, walking through the hospital a little bit uh, with Hogan and his eye, his right eye started to dangle out and everything. So they had to get him back into uh, into his room to repair it. He had to get back into surgery and to repair it. Uh, the other thing too was when Sherry saw him because Sherry Martell uh, was friends with him and she saw him and she screamed. Uh, in horror, uh, which he was saw, you know, and it shocked him awake a little bit. Um, even though they told him, "Hey, you got to be quiet in a little bit. You know, don't. You know, don't, uh, you got to be quiet a bit. Don't. You know. You know. Don't get. You know. Don't like scream and get horrified." And then she did the exact opposite. So uh, there was that. Uh, they talked about him and Hogan having a falling out, and mostly it was due to his wife, uh, Missy, not Missy Hyatt, but another Missy who was a fan who. Um, you know, met him when she went basically backstage, you know, she snuck backstage, saw him and said she loved him and everything. So, you know, that's how that started. And then she found him, uh, on Facebook, uh, through a friend or through a, a confidant, if you will. And she basically was, um, I guess you could say the, the spark he needed and everything for it in his life. Uh, but there's something about her, I guess, that kind of bothers, you know, people like Hogan and, and others. Uh, so I don't know what that is. Um, I'm assuming she's kind of like an alpha female. She kind of like takes charge uh, when, you know, things need to be taken care of and stuff like that. So I'm assuming that's what it is. They don't like, you know, uh, a f an alpha female being in the presence. I, I don't know if that's the, if that's the reasoning. But I will say this. Um... You can tell that, you know, Brutus, Ed Leslie, that's his real name, uh, wants to get back together as friends with Hogan. And, and Missy, obviously, is okay with it and all that. Um, uh, you know, I'm assuming she's okay with it. Um, so, you know, I, you know, he wants to do that and everything. He's open to it. And he believes, and I think I have to agree with him on this, that Hogan's open to it too. It's just that I think it's that, it's that Missy factor that's kind of like, to me, Hogan feels like he's the kind of guy, like, he needs proof Missy can be trusted. Like, Missy is, you know, the right person for, for Brutus. Uh, but outside of that, I thought it was a good episode. And to me, him and Missy, they make a good couple. A uh, very cute, adorable couple. Look, they're, they're kind of like, you know, you know, big kids, if you will. You know, the big kids and everything. Uh, when you When you see them, you know, as they are, you know, they kind of act like big kids and all that. So... You know, I'm, I'm happy he's got, you know, someone he can have fun with and all that, um, you know, throughout his life. And, you know, is and I, and I believe she is willing to be like, hey, if you want to, you know, reunite with Hulk and everything down the line, or at least try to work something out, I'm cool with it. Uh, she just doesn't want any bad influences in his life. So we'll see what happens there. But I thought, I thought that episode was good. And then um, two weeks ago, they talked about Harley Race. They had some footage. First time this footage got shown, home video footage of Harley um, when he was uh, married. Uh, they talked to one of his ex-wives. And yeah, there are stories in here that if you didn't know much about Harley Race um, before, you definitely found out stuff you didn't know uh, through this. And, you know, they, t uh, they did go, <laughs> excuse me, they did go over some stories like Harley being approached by Vince. Uh, before Starcade '83 to not show the event and bring the title to WWE or WWF at the time, 
and Harley, basically in the reenactment, sniffed the check and then crumpled it, threw it at Vince, you know, basically said, I'm a man of my word, I'm not going to do this. You know, Vince tried to ta leg tackle him, and according to what some of the people they talked to, which include Harley's son and others that worked with him, uh, basically Harley got him in a front face lock and basically put Vin, you know, basically put Vince to sleep because Vince went, you know, limp and everything. So yeah, basically Vince learned there. Don't don't mess with Harley. Uh, they did go over Harley going to WWE and becoming the king, kind of getting that gimmick and everything, uh, and all that. Uh, they talked about the injury he suffered when he landed on a table in his match with Hogan and everything. So, yeah, they, they talked about a lot of stuff that you knew about, you've heard about, and some other stuff they, you know, you didn't know about um, as well. Uh, like him, you know, learning to train by the Zabisco brothers when he was working on their farm and his payment and the payment they would give him is training him. So thought that was nice to hear. Uh, but, yeah, you know, just a just a good episode, a lot darker, I will say, a lot more uh, serious, a lot more... Uh, intimate, if you will, and, you know, kind of going, going behind the scenes and telling you about who this guy was, you know, outside of what you already knew. So I enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, you know, definitely found out some things we didn't know and definitely uh, found found out some behind the scenes stuff of, of things that we did know uh, and everything. Like when he did had that table injury, it caused his gut to burst basically uh, on the inside. It didn't kill him. It almost did. It didn't though, but it definitely shortened his career um, in the ring. But overall, I thought the Harley, Ra Harley race episode was great. Uh, they had people like Trevor Murdoch and like I said, Harley's son and his ex-wife uh, in there. So, you know, really good episode. And for the beefcake one, they had people like uh, uh, Nobbs. They had Brian Nobbs in there. Uh, they had uh, B. Brian Blair from the Killer Bees in there, so yeah, that was that was nice to see. That was nice to see and everything. And then this past week was this past week was Chris Colt, and this one was real probably I would say the darkest, if not the craziest one, because he's a he was a wrestler that basically had he not done the stuff that he did, would have been a big time player. You know, in the eyes of a lot of folks. Uh, basically, they talk about the fact that he was gay. He was openly gay. And that his partner uh, that he teamed with, uh, in the, as the Dupree brothers, uh, became his actual lover. And, you know, they, you know, being who they were, were really like stand out -ish as a tag team. And, you know, like that was one of the first, you know, indications of, okay, something's not right about this team, even on screen. Uh, they talked about his metamorphosis, if you will, from going from that to, you know, basically being a very dark, you know, psychedelic alternative rock kind of character, you know, and just doing what he had to do to get hated as a heel and, and all that. But it also they um, they also basically uh, talked about how he actually when he was walking the streets of San Francisco, you know, gave a, a girl. Uh, a cigarette, because she was asking if he had a light and everything, and uh, I, th I think it was a light or you know, if he if it was something, it was I think it was either a drink or a light or something like that. And she was sitting on some steps in San Francisco, and he didn't even know who it was until he walks over to another area. He sees this poster with the girl with the exact same girl on it, and and looking at the poster, he finds out it's Janis Joplin. So he ends up being part of her crew for a bit. Uh, and then he kind of takes inspiration from her to, you know, incorporate into his wrestling style and stuff. He actually starts coming out to one of Alice Cooper's uh, songs at the time. Uh, I can't think of the name of it right now, but it was like a welcome to my N netherworld or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, I have to go back and rewatch. But one of the things they did touch upon, like I said, is you know, how he m m went through this metamorphosis. And one of the ways he went through it was, you know, having, you know, in, you know, having a lot of drugs and everything um, as a part of it, drinking drugs and all that. And uh, they even, they even talked to one of his former partners, Billy Robinson, who was an enhancement talent 
you know, in WWE and NWA, WCW. And Billy basically said one time they got off the plane and before he could, in, in, or not before, but just as he's barely getting off, Chris is already at the bar, you know, drinking, at this bar and breakfast drinking. And he's like, oh, that's it. You know, I can't, I can't do this anymore. So, yeah, it was a very, very dark, probably the darkest one they've done. Very dark and psychedelically weird to an extent because, again, they talk about what he did throughout his career, even going as far as to take, you know, adopt a Nazi gimmick, you know, uh, in the late 80s and stuff. But the one common denominator here, even with Jim Cornette, is, you know, if he hadn't done what he did, he probably would have made it to the big time and been a big player. Uh, they did touch upon a story that they had previewed in the trailers and even in the preview up to the episode where he took some LSD before a cage match and he started imagining all these giant spiders coming over the cage to come get him. And he escaped and he basically started to punch people and Billy Robinson, who was just starting at the time and being his partner, had to go and basically rescue him by holding, fending the fans off with a chair and stuff. So yeah, it was a very, like I said, very dark Probably the darkest so far um, episode they've done, the weirdest one so far, and because the ending was he passed away, either you know either being found in an alleyway with a needle in him or in a homeless house or something like that, but yeah, very dark. Um, probably like I said, very dark in its um, telling. They did have this journal where they had uh, people narrating, you know, as him. So yeah, it was very uh, very dark, very psychedelic. Uh, but very interesting, and I like when they do these kind of stories on wrestlers we may not know. Uh, but let me know what your thoughts are, though, on those three episodes. That's pretty much going to do it, guys. Um, let me know if you've seen them, and hopefully I'll be able to do another review uh, up to date, you know, this time around. Because the next episode they're going to do is on Gentleman Chris Adams, who is known for his time in World Class, as well as WCW, NWA. And then the week after that is going to be Sensational Sherry. Sensuous Sherry, Sherry Martell, if you will, the, they're going to do one on her. So, looks like they're going to do all of them in a row instead of just like taking a break. And um, by the way things are going, they should be done by the summer. That's the, the way they're going. Uh, but let me know what your thoughts are, though, on some of these episodes. If you've seen them all, which one intrigued you the most? Uh, and until then, I will talk to you all later. And I am out.